The Dora 38 is finally here. As we get closer and closer to the 40th release of the popular Linux distribution, it shows no signs of slowing down at all. And Fedora 38 is here with Linux kernel 6.2, GNOME 44, and well, it's a fantastic release and I can't wait to give it a full review, which is exactly what I'll do in today's video. At this point, I think the majority of the Linux community is very familiar with Fedora, but if you're new to the community, then what exactly is Fedora? Is it a Linux powered hat? Well, no, that's not what it is. Fedora Workstation, or Fedora for short, which is what I'll call it during the remainder of this review, it's a distribution that is developed by the Fedora Project and is sponsored by Red Hat. It's considered to be an upstream distribution of Red Hat Enterprise Linux with a focus on providing you with a modern Linux experience. There's a few other versions of Fedora as well, such as Fedora Server, and there's others in addition to that, but in today's video, we're going to focus on the Workstation version. Fedora Workstation is a developer-focused distribution that provides a full desktop experience with a GNOME desktop front and center. It has built-in applications that serve a variety of use cases, such as an office suite and even virtualization being supported right out of the box. With version 38 of the popular distribution being released this week, it's time to give it a full review. And during the time that I've spent with Fedora 38, I came away very impressed. It's an awesome release. As far as why it's awesome, well, let's get into the review and I'll tell you all about it. And here it is. What you're seeing right now is Fedora 38 installed on one of my desktops. On this channel, I always use real hardware for my distribution reviews and not virtual machines, so that way you'll get a more authentic look at the distribution that I'm reviewing. Specific to Fedora 38, what we have is a release of Linux that's powered by Linux kernel 6.2, as well as the latest GNOME desktop, which is currently up to version 44. When it comes to new features in Fedora 38, the majority of those are coming from GNOME 44. I'll touch on some of those new features right now, but I do have a dedicated review video for GNOME 44 for those of you that want a closer look. As I mentioned during my GNOME 44 review, it's a great desktop. Even though there's nothing truly stand out when it comes to GNOME 44, all the smaller changes all across the desktop are definitely welcome. But there is a feature of GNOME 44 that unfortunately comes across as unfinished. When it comes to the background apps feature of GNOME 44, the idea is that if an application is running with no visible window, it's going to be listed in the quick settings menu as you see right here. So that way you could be made aware of any applications that are running in the background. However, as I'll discuss later on in this review, GNOME completely botched this feature to the point where it's mostly useless. But Fedora isn't to blame for this particular feature. As I'll discuss later, it's a feature specific to the GNOME desktop itself and is only present in Fedora 38 by association. But in all other aspects, GNOME 44 is a great release and its presence is very welcome in Fedora 38. If you want to learn even more about this version of GNOME, feel free to check out the full review that's already on my channel. I'll leave a card for that video right about here. And for the remainder of the video, I'm going to focus on changes that are specific to Fedora. One of the biggest changes this time around is that software availability in Fedora 38 has been improved quite a bit. The most noticeable of those changes is the fact that Flatpak applications from FlatHub are now fully available. Flatpaks themselves, if you don't know what those are, they're a universal package format, meaning a developer can release an app in the Flatpak format and make it available to every distribution that supports Flatpaks, rather than publishing separate packages for each supported distribution. In addition, Flatpaks are generally more up-to-date and are managed separately from distribution packages. In previous releases of Fedora, Flatpaks from the FlatHub repository were basically nerfed in the distribution. The majority of them were hidden from view, and this was due to a filter that was added to remove or hide some of those packages, all because the Fedora project has a phobia of being sued to the point where they make very strange decisions. Thankfully though, in Fedora 38, common sense prevails and that filter has been removed by default. This means that the entirety of FlatHub is available to you in Fedora 38 out of the box. And I think that this is a very welcome change, and in my opinion, filtering out applications from FlatHub was a solution looking for a problem, 
I'm not aware of any actual legal issues with Flatpak, so the entire thing was really silly, but thankfully it's no longer an issue. Another new feature in Fedora 38 is less of a feature and more of a tweak. If you've used Linux for any amount of time lately, you've probably run into a situation where you go to shut down your Linux machine, only to find that the process is hanging because it's waiting for a process to close that doesn't want to close for some reason, and then you end up waiting another minute for the process to finish. In Fedora 38, the timeout period has been drastically reduced, and that means that shutdown delays and even startup delays should be minimized as a result. And this problem is not specific to Fedora at all. You can experience this on any distribution of Linux that uses systemd. But thankfully, Fedora has decided to take this upon themselves and introduce a change in the default settings that's going to make this situation less annoying. By default, the timeout for starting or stopping a process is set to 1 minute and 30 seconds. And this is the default on most distributions of Linux. But the Fedora project in Fedora 38 decided to cap the timeout at 15 seconds instead, with the idea being that if a process doesn't stop in 15 seconds, it's unlikely that it's going to stop at all. I thought the decision was a great one and very reasonable. But unfortunately, before the final release, the Fedora team decided to cap the timeout at 45 seconds instead of 15, which in my opinion drastically lowers its effectiveness. But still, it's great that Fedora at least did something about this, waiting a minute and 30 seconds was just tedious. In fact, what I'll do right now is show you exactly where this tweak is. If you open up slash etsy slash systemd slash system.conf, you'll see an option there called default timeout start sec. Now, right now, there's a hash symbol in front of this line, which means that it's been converted into a comment. And that also means that the default value is in effect, but you can see the default value right here, which is, like I mentioned, 45 seconds. And since this isn't a Fedora specific tweak, you can make this change on any distribution that uses systemd. Of course, you'll want to thoroughly test this before making this modification in production. But if you are curious how to go about changing this timeout period, well, this file right here is where this setting is located. If you do want to change this, what you can do is uncomment this line and then change the number of seconds. And this setting configures how long the system will wait for a process to close before giving up. You could also do the same for the startup time as well. On my end, I dropped this all the way down to 15 seconds, and so far I haven't had a single problem. But even though a timeout of 45 seconds is way too long and they should have went with a lower number, it's a welcome change all the same. And you know what? I really, really, really enjoy Fedora 38. I think it's one of the best distribution releases in quite some time. And sure, there's no standout features to get all that excited about, like I've mentioned a few times now, but Fedora has never really been about that. It's more about implementing the GNOME desktop and providing you with a good experience, and they did that in this release as well. But there is a downside that I do need to make you guys aware of. And this particular downside is not the fault of Fedora. I feel like they've done a great job with this release, what we have is an issue with GNOME itself that might cause some confusion. It's the same thing that I mentioned in my GNOME review, but I'm mentioning it again here because it's relevant to this review and it's something that you might run into if you use Fedora. So to help minimize confusion, we need to have a quick chat about that background apps feature. As I mentioned during my GNOME 44 review, the background apps feature gives you the ability to view background apps that might be running on your system. In this context, a background app is defined as an application that's running, an application that would have had a visible window, but for whatever reason doesn't have a visible window, so it's running in the background, but you don't see it. And that seems like a great thing to have, but unfortunately, GNOME has botched this feature so bad that it's not only mostly useless, any benefit that this feature provides is undone by the confusion that it introduces to the distribution. Here I have KeePass XC, and in the settings I've configured this app to minimize to the system tray instead of outright closing when I close out the application. After closing it, what I can do to demonstrate this is click on the quick settings menu here at the upper right, and as you can see right here, it shows that KeePass XC is running in the background. And so far, so good. However, the first issue is that there's literally no way to get this application back onto the screen. All you can do is close it. And due to this, that means that any application that uses a system tray icon has broken functionality in GNOME 44. If you minimize an application to the background or a system tray, it's just gone. 
To be fair, the entire point of this feature is not to be a means by which to support system tray icons, but this is the closest thing that GNOME currently has to that functionality, as they've decided to remove support for system tray icons a while back. Their reasoning behind removing support for system tray icons is that the developers feel that such icons is a legacy thing that's in the process of going away, except that's completely false. System tray icons are here to stay, and they're never going away. GNOME had a chance to restore this required functionality with this background apps feature, and they decided not to do that. But that's not all. The background apps feature of GNOME 44 fails at its only job. It's only able to detect background apps in the Flatpak format. And this means that the vast majority of potential applications that might be running in the background will not be shown. It's a real head-scratcher that such a feature would be released that only does about 25% of the job that it was designed to do. For an example of this, I'll open Keypass XC again, but this time I'm going to open the distribution package instead of the Flatpak version. I have it configured the same way to hide to a system tray icon, but keep in mind, many applications have system tray icons enabled by default. Keypass XC is just one of the few where you have to turn that on, but most applications that have system tray icon support have that enabled by default. Anyway, since this isn't the Flatpak version of Keypass XC, if I close it, it'll be running in the background and will not be shown in the Quick Settings menu. And due to this, that means that users can be led to believe that no background apps are running even when there are. The background apps feature of GNOME 44 is one of the most facepalm-worthy implementations I've seen during my career in Linux, but since this botched feature is part of GNOME and is only found in Fedora by association, I'm not counting this against Fedora itself. But I wanted to make you guys aware of this so that way you'll understand its weaknesses and also understand to, well, ignore this feature completely since it's incomplete. Overall, Fedora 38 is a fantastic release of the popular distribution. Now sure, there's no standout features to get excited about, but that's not what Fedora is. It's not a distribution to wow you, it's a distribution that's meant to be useful, especially for those of you that want to get your work done. People use Fedora not because they want the best looking theme or, you know, some cutting edge feature that sets it apart from other distributions. They use it because they want something stable based on GNOME that just works, and Fedora 38 is absolutely that distribution. In fact, considering that Fedora is more of a stock GNOME distribution, that might even excite you anyway because, well, Fedora has the best GNOME implementation of any distribution that I've used, so if you're a GNOME fan like I am, you might like Fedora just for that reason alone. And then if you try this release, I think you're going to really like it. The only downside that I brought up isn't related to Fedora as well, so I'm not going to count that at all. Fedora just works. It's a great distribution, and I highly recommend that you check it out. Now, what are your thoughts about this review or Fedora in general? Let me know in the comments down below. I can't wait to read what you guys have to say. In the meantime, thank you so much for checking out this review of Fedora 38. I really appreciate it, and I'll see you in the next video.